you know, I- Indonesia is not fully to blame. Yeah. Because we got our culture of corruption, menjilat dan lain-lain. It was from Belanda. Sangat handal. Because Belanda. Yeah, kita penjilat yang sangat way. handal. Yeah. <laughs> Tapi ya, itu karena praktek politik itu sudah sejauh itu sih. Iya yeah, benar. Thank God kita punya presiden yang politiknya jago banget. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta make sure uh, all your friends go... Uh, Come and embrace Jesus, or else they're gonna go to hell like Raymond yeah. back there. <laughs> <laughs> welcome back to the Based Indonesian Talks. Today we have a very special guest. Please welcome uh, Indonesia's biggest finance bro, <laughs> Hello? Raymond Chin. Welcome, welcome, welcome. welcome to Thank my podcast, so buddy. Thank you for having me. All right, but so, it's a shame I don't have blue eyes. Apa? Uh, five feet. Five, eyes. five, apa, six, eight six, foot oh. tall. Wait, eight yeah. foot tall is like super big, man. Five yeah, foot, yeah. five, five foot, foot blue eyes, yeah. blonde hair. Oh, yeah, yeah, blonde yeah. hair. Okay, yang lagu itu kan? Finest bro that doesn't have any money. That's, That's okay, me. man. Hey, I mean, like, looks are pretty subjective. Mm-hmm. And I feel like you're uh, you're very, you're the embodiment of great finance bro here in Indonesia. Yeah. Okay, I'll broke, stop the glazing broke, there. Broke finance bro. Okay. <laughs> broke finance bro. You sure about that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Today I actually have a plan to talk to you about uh, what is this? Let me open up what I wanted to talk to you about. Uh, basically, I wanted to talk about the elites of Indonesia or uh, the true rulers of Indonesia. How oh, national yes. elites control policy? Yeah, but I feel like that's a that's a pretentious <laughs> yeah. topic. The bohirs. And you said, and you said, you know, just ask me anything, right? The thing yeah. is, like, the reason why I write the uh, TOR in the first place. Mm-hmm is because some of my guests, they want to know exactly what I want to talk about. But mm-hmm. you're, you seem pretty open to talk I'm about everything. About anything. As long right. as I believe what I'm talking is, what I'm, yeah, it's, it's, it's right. You know? I'm not make, I'm not merugikan orang lain. So it's fine. Okay, dude. Yeah. We shall jump to the first question. All right. All right, first question. How are you Muslim? Because my mom is Muslim, I am born Muslim. Uh, Back then, diajarin ngaji, baca Al-Quran. Really? Yeah, yeah, Lu dulu yeah. TPA? Ya, yeah, apa tuh TPA? Itu loh yang, where you go to the, like, the mosque, and then you read the Quran. And oh, then, no, no, no. You don't go to TPA? Oh, waktu itu simple, ngaji di rumah, uh, panggil ustad, belajar sholat. Uh, ah, yeah, I see, yeah. I see, I see. Because like, the revelation that apparently Raymond Chin is Muslim, I feel like comes as a shock to a lot of people here yeah, in for Indonesia. Most people, because the assumptions is if you're Chindo, you're not Muslim, you know? Yeah. But there's already some cases in Indonesia, like Medi Rinaldi uh-huh. and some other people. It's 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 uncommon. Uh-huh. That's why people are shocked, but it's not impossible, right? Ah, I see, I see. I thought, I thought, I assume that you, apa ya, lo itu pindah agama. You, uh, you, you jumped into a different server, which is, you know, Islam. No, uh, born and raised Muslim, bro. Oh, Alhamdulillah, born Habibi. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> <laughs> Alhamdulillah, Habibi. Oh my God, man. Tapi iya sih, kayak gue harus jujur kayak pas waktu gue baca itu story-nya kayak orang kaget lo itu ternyata Muslim itu that's wild, man. Karena gue kira lo itu lahir di agama lain terus lo pindah ke Islam. That's like one of the questions I wanted to ask you. Justru it's the other way around. Uh, my dad before he passed away, he had converted to Muslim. He, yeah, he did. Before death. He was, he was, yeah, my dad passed away almost 10 years ago. Mm. And before he passed away, Praise he Bizarre. converted to Muslim. Yeah, mm. He was Christian before, Singaporean. But my mom was uh, Muslim, but not really Muslim. But suddenly uh, around 20 years ago, she had a revelation and suddenly hardcore Muslim. Hardcore Muslim. Oh, not hardcore, not hardcore. Okay, but no, hardcore. A devoted Muslim. Devoted Muslim. Devoted, devoted Muslim. Yeah. I see, I see. So did you used to go to like, uh, you were born Muslim, so did you used to go to like a uh, Chindo school? Like I Anabur? went to a Christian school. A Christian school? Christian school. How was the experience there? Poor. How? Actually, it's the first time I felt like back then I don't have any affinity for religion. I. I don't believe in religion, even if I'm born Muslim, because... Uh, as a minority uh-huh. Muslim in a Christian school, there's this uh, sixth grade, I think this one religion teacher uh-huh. told, told the whole class like this, hey, uh, we need to uh, believe in religion so we can go to heaven. Mm. And if you have a friend that is not Christian, please help them or they will go to hell. Like, oh, Ra- damn. like Raymond back there. Like Raymond back, like oh Raymond my back God. There. 
itu kan konsep predestination. Exactly. Yeah. Like imagine being sixth grade, uh-huh. being in a class where everyone is Christian and, and the teacher like Raymond. That is so crazy. Oh and my God. That's why. That's why. And then going to church, I went to church and don't listen to music that are not rohani. Don't listen up. Like there's so much restrictions that uh-huh. it doesn't make sense logically, right? Turns out it's not the fault of the religion, but it's fault of people who are preaching it wrong. Preach it out loud. Preaching it wrong because uh, you kind of have to balance two uh-huh. things with religion, right? The religion itself and humanity. Because an extremist religion that doesn't have a humanity, they'll become a terrorist group, right? Mm-hmm. Become anar- anarchy, right? But if you combine being uh, religious and being human, then you start to incorporate Hey, we're, we're, we're living in a society of people, right? So you, you can have your own belief, but don't force it to other people as if that you're the one who's, you're the only one who's right. Yeah. Mm. And that's a problem growing up in a religion-centric family, school, and community. Mm. So I think most people need to understand with religion or spiritualism is your relationship with God. Uh-huh. Like it works both ways, both in a biblical sense, all Ada nggak sih Alquran? <laughs> Apa sih biblical masih bisa dibilang? Ya yeah, biblical yeah, masih yeah. bilang itu yeah. the expression lah. Yeah. When we talk about biblical, we don't necessarily mean like uh, the Holy Bible, but we're talking about like uh, holy scriptures. Yeah, holy, yeah. The scriptures like yeah. One of the scriptures and one you as a human mm-hmm. being, right? So most people scrap this away, go all in into here, and it will interpret differently. Yeah, dogmatis yeah. They're exactly. very dogmatic. Yeah, and some people can't really differentiate both. Yes. So they'll become extremists and ended up hurting other people. A Guru Gumbul once said to me that, I know, I know like lately he's been like, uh, like cancel, yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> deep inside like controversy, but I got his yeah. back, man. Yeah. Because he once told me that uh, orang Indonesia dibilang mabok agama, justru mereka gak mabok agama. Karena mereka itu tidak memahami agama yang sesungguhnya. They don't no. understand the true exactly. value of religion. Religion does not does not implore you to uh, to apa to salawatan malam-malam with the with the gang with the homies. Mm. Religion implores you to practice honesty. Yeah. To practice loyalty. To practice uh, altruism. Mm. Uh, to practice what else? Uh, sincerity to people. I think for the most part is believing something bigger than yourself. Yes. Because what would be the death of even the most successful people on earth mm-hmm. is their own ego. Yeah. I second it, that. It happens to almost everyone who fell rock bottom once they achieve something. So if you have something to hold on to, something bigger than yourself, like there, there, there's this theory of happiness, right? There's this three P, pleasure, passion, purpose. Pleasure is the shortest one. Pl- passion is somewhat moderate, but if you find your purpose, you'll ultimately find everlasting happiness. Mm. So purpose is always derived as something bigger than yourself. Mm-hmm. And religion can be a part of living with purpose. Mm-hmm. But some people are living, uh, the purpose is to give impact, to mm-hmm. leave something behind before you die, like to uh, do something for society. So it needs to be bigger than yourself. Because if you live just with a, social construct that you are the center of everything, mm-hmm. you'll fuck up. There's no meaning in life. Because when you die, you don't bring anything after death. There's nothing that, we don't bring anything, except for the deeds we do, and the impact that we leave for society. I think that's it. Yes, immortality is when people, uh, uh, people uh, don't forget us uh, even long after we die. Yeah. That's what I like to say. But I also I also would like to relate an experience since you are a Muslim going to mm-hmm. a Christian school, right? I was a, did, you, did, I, I'm a Muslim going to a I, I went to a Catholic school when I was a, yeah, when I was young. I went to a Catholic kindergarten, mind you. Mm-hmm. And my experience is like uh 180 from you, right? Huh? But not in a good way. Yours yours is like you basically bully them, right? Mine is the other way around. How how am I bullying them? 
No, look, you're sorry. They me. they bully you. Yeah, yeah they bully, they bully you by uh, saying, yeah, you gotta you gotta make sure uh, all your friends go uh, come and embrace Jesus, or else they're gonna go to hell like Raymond yeah. back there. <laughs> that's a, that's a very that's a very excruciating uh, experience to have when you are young. On sixth grade. On sixth right? grade. My mind is not developed yeah. yet. <laughs> this is this was me before I was in first grade. Right. Uh. I remember. Uh, I went to a Catholic school back in Jibubur. Oh. And then one of the teachers said, uh, you know, they began singing choirs. We mm. love Jesus. <laughs> yeah, like that, right? And then they said, uh, they said something about believing in Jesus, right? Mm-hmm. And then I scram from the, I, sc- I scream, from, I yelled at the back of the class, your religion is not my religion because yours is fake. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I think we got to put a hard <laughs> disclaimer there. <laughs> I, was, I will definitely. I have no nothing. We have nothing against. We have religions. nothing this against is religion. Past yeah. experience. This when is we just were, past experience. This was just like uh, yeah, we'll, we'll end up being fufu fa fa version yeah, two. Man. You know, man. Yeah, <laughs> fufu fa version two, man. But I would just like to put a disclaimer. It was me back when I was like four years old. Four years old. Yes, All right. I said that, and then I remember the teacher like came at me and be like, "We can't say that here. That is not nice. <laughs> you have to respect other religion." And I said, "I don't care." <laughs> <laughs> I remember. I remember my dad explaining to me. That's exactly what I said to the teachers. And so the next day they sent me to remember? a Muslim. They sent me to the Muslim school. <laughs> they sent me to the Muslim no, kindergarten. Your, your parents. My parents, parents sent send me to the Muslim. kinder. Oh. Yeah, to a Muslim <laughs> kindergarten. <laughs> Thinking like maybe I, as a Muslim kid, I was probably frustrated inside a Catholic kindergarten, right? Uh, but but Catholic is mostly more lenient than Christian, row. Yeah, right? I I don't know about that though. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. So you said you talk you you said something about purpose, right? Have you figured out like what's your purpose in life? Obviously, because mm. I see that you're a very driven and uh, consistent man inside his field of work. So. How old are you, by the way? I'm 26. 26. Right? Yes. All right. I think it, I think it's gonna get closer to uh, when you go into 30 to 35. Most people experience in 35. The young people say it's quarter life crisis, but I'm more like quarter life enlightenment. Mm. More like <clears throat> quarter life mm. crisis is about what do you want to do in life. You, you're you kind of confused. What am I doing something right? Uh, am I in the right path? Quarter life enlightenment is mostly what happens after I die. Uh, right? That's a big question, right? Yes, that's a really big question. Even as someone very religious, yeah, they can't scratch that itch on the back of their head, right? Am I going to heaven or hell? Even worse, is there any heaven or hell, right? Mm. So at the very least, if you uh, use stoicism, right? You, you focus on what you can control. You read stoic? I'm a light stoic. Oh, okay. Light stoic. So mostly is uh, just do some things that, that are in your control mm-hmm. and let the things that you can't control and leave it to God, right? And my purpose is basically question what happens after that I die? And then nothing. The, the answer is nothing. For me, it's nothing. Then uh, lies the second question. What do I leave when I die? So then... Yeah, that's something bigger than yourself, right? When you try to make a lot of money, like you, you don't bring your money to to your grave, you know. When you have a big house, you have a lot of girls. You, you don't bring it to your grave oh, unless yeah. you're you're a psycho. Unless you're buried in it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know Chinese buried. traditional burial, right? Yeah, where they, 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 they bury, bury like literally already. like everything. That's like yeah. that's like Chinese people way of f- saying "fuck you." I bring everything yeah. to death with me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so the enlightenment yeah. was. So what do I want to leave before I die? Yes. And then the biggest trigger in my life that actually uh, I regret up to this, this day is almost 10 years ago, my dad passed away seeing his son achieve nothing. Mm. Back then I was not consistent. I don't have any ambition. I, I never made money. I don't know what I want to do in life. So that's the last image my dad remembered about me before he passed away. And that regret will eat you up till the day that you die. I think I think that's the one experience that changed uh, what I want to do. Mm. So I remembered my dad saying, "If you want to do something, do something that's uh, positive or impactful for other people." So that became my, in a way, uh, guide mm. towards what's bigger than myself that I'll leave behind before I die. Mm-hmm. And that thing can change 
for now is because I'm criticizing the government a lot. I'm criticizing about Indonesia. I plan mm-hmm. to die in Indonesia. Like I have enough money, network and connection to just live in Singapore, maybe uh, happier than living in Indonesia. You know? But I plan to die here because once you realize everything that I am, have and what I do is because Indonesia, as bad as it seems, Indonesia gave me a lot of opportunities and a place to learn. So I got to give back. At least that's the principles my parents taught me. So mm. what's bigger than myself is I want to leave something positive for Indonesia. Would you say that uh, elites are the, um, would you say that elites are the driving factor of course. in making society a better place? Do you think that el- elites of Indonesia, of any country, they must have noblesse oblige? A Nobody's concept so. where the rich and privilege, the aristocratic, they have the obligation to uplift the people. Moral. At most moral obligation, but the question is, does those elites have morals? Mm. Right? Yeah, yeah. Karena, gini, most people, most elites, and how they get there uh-huh. is without moral. Uh-huh. So to expect them to have moral obligation to give back to Indonesia is uh-huh. a bit misguided. Ah, I see, I see. I mean, to get there, to become the dragons and the dragons of dragons, you you kind of have to throw away morals and ethics. Wait, wait, wait. There are dragons yeah, of, of dragons? Course. Even Bohirs have Bohirs, you know. Who is above the nine dragons, man? Plenty of people. All right. Who? Xi Jinping. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, sorry, sorry. And Putin. Oh, oh damn. Okay, didn't come out of my mouth. But yeah, please continue, continue. <laughs> yeah, pasti ada. Mm-hmm. Above the nine dragons tu pasti ada lagi. Gitu. Mm-hmm. Cuma, they got there. Yeah, karena Indonesia tu, we we have this, uh, apa, estrat capitalism, where most of the bohirs and the dragons rely on their relationship with the pejabat to gain their wealth. Mm. Gitu. Jadi, because the relationship is very strong in Indonesia mm. compared to South Korea the chebols yeah we have the dragons they have the chebols mm-hmm. chebol yeah they are non estrat capitalism they need to be close with the government but their business don't rely heavily on the government ah uh, yes for example uh, tambang ya kan? property mm. Mm-hmm. energy mm-hmm. pangan gitu. those are primary sectors that government should own mm-hmm. but if you see the nine dragons in Indonesia guess what business they're in Well, you mentioned it, mining, yeah. uh, housing, real estate, property development. Yeah, that's why us millennials and Gen Z have a very small chance to own a house, a proper house, mm. because they control the property. And just, I think yesterday I saw the news that uh, Prabowo wants to lower the property tax, right? Uh, he'll, he'll, have, he'll have to go through the uh, dragon lobbyists first. Yeah. No, actually, it's it benefits the dragons. It benefits the dragons in what way? Lower tax, right? Uh huh. So they'll oh, just own property. Give tax breaks to yeah. Dollar. They'll just Shit. own more property. Uh uh-huh. Like for them, owning a uh, hundred to thousand houses is like that. Mm-hmm. But then, if the private sector owns the properties, they can do whatever they want to raise the prices, mm-hmm. like uh, manipulate the market prices mm-hmm. that us as human beings, as normal human beings, we can't afford them anymore. Generally, you should do what Singapore does. Their housing program is, like buying a house there is fucking expensive. Right? Very expensive to buy a house in Singapore. Hmm. But since government owns majority of the land and property there, they can make a program for affordable housing. Mm, affordable so at housing. Least, yeah, at least the middle class, at least the lower class, they're not homeless. Hmm. That's how you should run it. You can't leave primary sectors, kayak kebutuhan primer, sandang pangan papan, to the private sector. The private sector should focus on secondary to third tier, tertiary needs, like innovate, innovation drivers. Yes, I agree. Samsung, SNK, like those Korean companies drive innovation. And Google, actually, Google, right? Apple, yeah. yeah look at our, 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 our Konglos. Gitu. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Name me one product that are innovative enough that can disrupt the global market from Indonesian Congos. Indomie? Sound horrid. <laughs> <laughs> There's no single product. They're out there, they're innovative. Mm. Yeah, that's a problem. It comes from Indonesia, yeah? 
Yeah. Mm, before we go inside the, before we explore further about this, let's mm. talk about the baselines first, right? Yeah. Uh, you, we, uh, we agreed that the private sector should focus on uh, primary. Uh, wait, no, they non shouldn't. Prim uh, yeah, they shouldn't focus on primary commodity. Uh, yeah, primary, non primary needs. Non primary needs. They, yeah. they should focus on non, non primary needs, right? Meanwhile, our uh, companies focus on the primary. Right. Yeah, energy, food. Yeah. yeah. How exactly did that relationship came to be here in Indonesia? It was back when uh, Belanda uh, ngejajah kita lah, basically. Mm. Right? Those people, uh, you know, I Indonesia is not fully to blame. Yeah. Because we got our culture of corruption, menjilat, dan lain-lain. It was from Belanda. Sangat handal, because Belanda. Yeah, kita penjilat yang sangat way. handal. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And in a way, the, the, what their strategy is defeated, impera, right? Mm -hmm. they, they, they polarize a certain group so they can conquer. So back then, the culture was harus menjilat. Mm. Ini harus menjilat ini, ini harus menjilat ini, harus menyuap ini, ini harus menyuap ini. And it becomes embedded to how the new government, even <coughs> after penjajahan, happened in Indonesia. Mm -hmm. So, apa tadi pertanyaannya? Tapi, pertanyaannya gue ini, ini kan? uh, kenapa perusahaan-perusahaan ini tuh masih bisa menguasai primary. Ya, yeah, karena back then pas dijajah, fokusnya di sana. Dan gue mau tambahin itu sih, I, I would like to add more about your explanation ya, yeah? because uh. this it, this goes in line with what I know about uh, about our country's history, uh. is that the Verenich Ostindich company, uh, VOC, yeah, VOC, they are so corrupt, the Dutch government literally had to shut them down and take over the entirety of Indonesia. Exactly, they're yeah. very corrupt. Like <laughs> we learn corruption from them. Yeah, their their government, their uh, that company is so fucking corrupt. Like the uh, the Dutch the Dutch crown had to like, udahlah, udah anjing lah ini perusahaan habis aja udah. Exactly. Terus udah gitu udah Indonesia gets ruled directly by the Dutch crown. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and uh, the thing about these Congos, right? Uh, I don't I don't want to make this about I don't re I really don't want to make this about race, right? Mm. But one cannot deny that the pattern seems occurring. Yeah, Chindo. That, yeah, most of the most of the Konglos are Chindo, you know. Like, yeah. so how do you explain this in history? Because back then, uh, pribumi lebih banyak, uh -huh. Chindo lebih dikit. Yeah, there's this term called middleman minority. Mm -hmm. Right. Jadi harus ada yang produsen, someone who produces, and yeah. someone who sells, berdagang, yeah. who trades. So waktu itu, the Dutch assigned the Chinese to trade. Uh -huh. So that was the history kenapa Chindo, itu semuanya dagang, uh, right? It doesn't make sense buat pribumi yang disuruh trade, siapa yang mau bertani. Uh -huh. Kan jumlahnya beda kan? So I think based on that, then every single Chindo uh, grew up knowing how to trade, mm. right? And does this go, does this experience goes in line with how you brought up? Oh, definitely. Uh, yeah, I my see, dad see. mostly. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my that, mom itu pure Indonesian. Ah. Don't, don't have any foreign blood at all. My my dad's Singaporean. Oh, I see, I see. Gitu, jadi kayak belajar. Are there any like cultural similarities between Singaporean Chinese and Chinese Indonesians in terms of like trading? My dad, um, in terms of trading? Yeah. I think like most Chindo families see about kayak saving, uh -huh. spending, uh, yeah, very yeah, yeah. lit, right? Uh -huh. Because they're born being very calculative about mm -hmm. giving and taking money. Mm. So that's what the pure Indonesians are not taught as they were born. Karena yes. kan balik lagi ke leluhur kita kan. Back when we were kita dijajah. Uh -huh. Diajarinnya adalah bertani, uh -huh. produksi. When they produce something they cannot sell. Mm. Right? So they have to rely on these traders mm -hmm. to sell. Mm -hmm. When the big money is from trading. Mm -hmm. Right? Because economy is about supply and demand, right? Who can meet the demands? and who can supply them, but the people who connect them are more valuable than either of them. Mm -hmm. I think that's a rule with business and economy. Because there's so much supply and so much demand in the world that are not met. Anyone who have the skill to connect those are very highly rewarded. And that's mm -hmm. why Chindo is, uh, controls more than 50% of our economy. Mm. I see, I see, I see, I see. Do you, do you, oh, yeah. Yes, it's true, yeah. <laughs> Tapi menurut lo, uh, still on the topic, menurut lo apakah Cindo bisa masuk menguasai pemerintahan Indonesia? Atau yeah, sudah? Of course. I think intinya, with the government, uh -huh. money is power. Uh. Right? The thing that's is 
terribly wrong in our political system is when people go into the government, mm-hmm. their expectation is to make money. Mm. It, it became the dogma, right? Yeah. I go into politics so I can make money. Is yeah. It? Yeah, because like, Uh, I meet a lot of council members in my real life job, right? Anjay, real life job. <laughs> yes, Mason Indonesians. I actually have a real life jobs. Uh, I, I I have a real life job. So I meet a lot of them and they like to say shit like once I get into the government, the representative, I'm going to look for projects. Projects like, why don't and you, then corruption why and don't, everything. Yeah, like why don't you just go open up a business or something, man? But like the thing Because about- it's easier to... To make money <clears throat> in the government than opening your own business. Making, running your own business is hard, bro. Yeah. It's probably going to be the hardest thing that you'll do in your life. But it seems like all the Chinese Indonesian are gifted at running businesses because obviously they were raised when they were little to do trade, right? Yeah. Here in Indonesia, uh, here for us Indonesians, right? Especially like super pure Indonesian family, especially the ones that are part of politics. Mm. They, are, they are taught to manipulate. Yeah. Yeah. There's so two Why? different because, things. Because... Pribumi have the privilege of being able to be PNS. Yes. Then. Yeah. The Chinese cannot. Mm. So there's the gap. Yeah. There's a corruption culture. There's a culture of getting projects and only the Pribumi can get there. Mm-hmm. But the Chinese needs to fend on their, their own. Mm-hmm. Right. They can't go into the formal sector. Mm. They, so they, what they, they have cash dagang. Yeah. That's it. Ujung-ujung entrepreneur ama, ama service, jasa, dagang yeah. dan jasa. You know, I have one controversial solution to solve Indonesia's government. There should be one filter before you go into uh, having a position in government. Uh. You got to be rich first. Why? Because it filters out people who go into politics for money. For money. Right? Mm -hmm. I think it's easier (coughs) to do something and not be influenced by other people if you're at the stage that you're not really driven by money anymore. Mm. And money is the root of everything that is wrong in our government. I feel like I feel like that uh when we when we start thinking that way, it goes to show how fucked up our society is to it the is. point where it fucked up how in uh, how fucked up Indonesian society is to the point where in order to become a politician, mm-hmm. you need to be financially independent and dominant first. You need to be financially backed. You need to be financially backed. Yeah, you, you don't need to be financially independent yet uh, to go into politics, but you just need to be financially backed. Oh no, I was saying, uh, I was saying that you said uh, you're you're in the opinion uh, that uh, you need to be rich first in order to run for office or join the government, right? Correctly. Yeah. yeah. And I said like uh, for us, for you, uh, for you to think that way goes to show that our society is so completely fucked up. Yeah. That it is. that's the solution that we need to do. Well. If that's the case, then plenty of Chindos are gonna rule Indonesia, man. Then so be it. Ah, if see, they're see, competent. See, see, see. But the thing with Indonesia is there's there's still racial and religion uh-huh. uh, barriers, yeah. Yeah, obviously, because like that's the thing. People, I, this is this is this is so what's so ironic about uh, racial relations in Indonesia, right? Mm. Arab Indonesians are, are con- Arab Indonesians are considered like the absolute, the apex predators, right? Oh, is it? Uh, okay, okay. Yeah. Indonesian, okay. Meanwhile, uh, the Chinese Indonesians are super rich, but mm. for some reason, they're they're marginalized mm. socially by the Indonesians. Mm. And so like, vice versa also happens as well, mm. right? And so when Arab Indonesians reach high positions inside government, nobody bats an eye. Mm-hmm. But then when Chinese Indonesians reaches like high levels of government, everybody loses their fucking minds. Exactly. And yeah. someone went to jail for it, right? If someone went to jail for it. Yeah. 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 Even But if that person is the most competent, the most integrity, uh, character, and even rich, yeah, that can bring Indonesia to new heights. Yeah. This, the majority of societies will, still won't accept it. Yeah. That is so fucked up. Which correlates to one thing. Pendidikan, mm. education. Mm. Because I, I heard this one quote, yeah. There's no limit to stupidity, but there's a limit to intelligence. Once you get smart enough, mm-hmm. you don't get smarter, you get wiser. Mm-hmm. When you're wise, you understand that not every situation you need to be smart. Yes. But when you're stupid and it goes without limits, you become ignorant. When you became ignorant, stupidity doesn't go away. Uh. Stupidity gets amplified. <laughs> So that's why the quote 
there's no limit to stupidity. Uh. It's true, especially in Indonesia. Mm. You can only get so smart before you get wise, mm. right? Yeah, because that's my what my mentor taught me. It's good that you're smart, but you need to be wise. When you're wise, you know there are places that you don't need to look smart. Mm. You need to be humble. You need to be listening. That's the thing with intelligence, but stupidity have no limits, bro. Yeah, stupidity has no limits. Have bro. no limits. Yeah. <laughs> There's this one barrier and then you become ignorant. When you went there, the stupidity gets amplified. Yeah, you, you start chewing on Tide Pods. <laughs> yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Chewing on Tide Pods. Yeah. But let's go back to the main uh, raison d'entre of yeah. Jay. Very French, eh? Very French. <laughs> like my friend, very uh, pretentious. <laughs> very behel. <laughs> very behel, man. But anyways. Um, we talked about the baselines of the history of why uh, this issue came to be, mm. uh, the private sector ruling the primary, uh, the primary needs. Uh, I'd like you to discuss on your, on your perspective, what you think, uh, elaborate the methods used by the private sector uh, to secure their interests through political sponsorships or alliances. Mm. Because you said mining, right? Mm. It needs perizinan, it needs permission, yeah, exactly. right? Uh, exporting commodity needs a lot of uh, compromises inside yeah. government protocols. Mm. Well, to make those easier, well, mm. one needs to be pocketed with the with Exactly, the dough, right? exactly. So there's, I think in terms of quality of life, let's start from there, quality of life out of rich people. Mm -hmm. There's almost no difference when you have one trillion to 10 trillion. Mm -hmm. So. Above that, beyond that, what you're looking for is not money, but power. Mm. Then it converts, right? It, it doesn't become a trade commodity, but it becomes a commodity to ensure you have power. So when you have 10 trillion, you want 20, you want 50, you want 100, because with power, there's no limits, especially mm. if you're a megalomaniac. So how do you secure that interest, right? So a lot of these businesses, let's say Tambang, right? Yeah. The whole world Mining. is going into ESG. Mm. There's this rumor that Indonesia was supposed to invest way more into green energy than what we're investing right now, but that disrupts this other industry. Mm. So how do you secure your market share? If you're already in mining, you're already in this industry that are getting obsolete, how do you secure it when the government says this? How do you make the government says this? is by basically securing the right people in the right position, giving them the right payroll. So that's exactly what's happening. So let's be honest, when we look about uh, the other industries instead of mining, yeah, misalnya, uh, apalagi yang relevant, yeah, I think mining is the, the most relevant one because we're supposed to be green now, but it hinders their interests, right? Hilirisasi, why would you want hilirisasi? It's easier to make money when I already own the apa sih, tempat tambangnya and I just sell. Gitu loh. Why would I need to spend more money untuk ngepabrikin ini semua? No need. So make sure you can let me do this. Who can let you? The government. So for them it's just to maintain power and have more power. And the fact that our system is that corrupt, most of them at least, at least have 10 to 20 people in the government they are strategic enough that they can do something about it. Mm. But these are all pure opinion. Yes. All so this these is a disclaimer. Are these, are these are hypotheticals. These are fairy tales yes. and hypotheticals. That's why I said <laughs> in my question, uh, from your perspective, right? I don't say it as a matter of fact. I'm just yeah. saying <laughs> from your perspective. Perspective is subjective. Yeah, right? Perspective is subjective. These are all opinions, guys. So, so don't report me to jail. I'm <laughs> under the perspective that a lot of these people are super fucking powerful. Like they can just do this, I've been doing this like lately, holy yeah, shit. Yeah. Um, they can just do this to make a problem go away. Yeah. Yeah. Or to make a problem. Or to make a problem. Yeah. Oh, that's insane. Let's say they don't they don't like someone in the industry, a uh -huh. competition, right? Uh, let's, let's, <laughs> let's, 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 <laughs> let's say sebuah aturan baru muncul. Okay. Suddenly that competitor loses a lot of market share. Oh, wow, well, right? yeah. And then you know that they have debt. You know? Oh yeah. Just cuma karena uh, anaknya dari ownernya itu gak suka sama dia. Oh, That's, it, like, gitu. That's abuse of power, right? Yeah. 
Then those are the thing that can happen in Indonesia hypothetically. Hypothetically ya. Yeah, hypothetically, hypothetically juga <laughs> ada orang yang nggak suka sama suatu partai. Uh, ya dari kemarin nggak masuk tuh partai itu ke DPR RI. Nah, hypothetically. Hypothetically ya. Yeah, hypothetically. Yeah, hypothetically. Yeah. Benar-benar. Anjir kita jadi. Karena emang masuk kemana-mana tuh butuh perjuangan, bro. Memang. Iya. Yeah. Yeah, perjuangan itu butuh sacrifice dan kadang sacrifice-nya itu ya ada sacrifice financial dan moral juga. Nah, benar, benar, benar. So, damn. So about this uh hmm, to summarize ya, to summarize ya. Yeah, yeah. Everything is about money. Mm-hmm. To summarize, everything that is wrong in Indonesia is because all about money. Mm. The elites wants more money to have more power. The orang-orang yang titip, they want money from mm. the elites. And then the whole thing from us, you know, the cost of business doing in this government right now, back then dibanding Pak Soeharto. Even if dia dijulikin the most corrupt president in the world waktu itu. Did yeah. he? Yeah, Soeharto kan? Really? Yeah. Number they one. have no evidence for that. <laughs> no. He's like his biggest fan. It's global. Okay, it's, it's global. global. He's that's what they say. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <dia, dia. laughs> back then, cost of business is not as expensive as now. Mm-hmm, yeah, right. Back then, corruption is concentrated. Concentrated to and, the families. Yes, and yeah. he can like if any if any business does not comply to his rules, like he can just strong arm them. Exactly. Yeah, iron hands, right? Yeah, but right now, corruption is. It's rampant. It's endemic. It is not concentrated. And the fact that everything is corrupt. Yeah, pretty much. And I now remember exactly the question I wanted to follow up regarding your explanation regarding how uh, Indonesia is now moving towards ESG and it puts at risk these primary businesses, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're going to talk about public policy a bit. Mm. So say if you are, uh, if you run the government, Mm-hmm. And then Indonesia needs to commit to ESG, and it needs to commit now because we're facing what is what tantamounts to existentialist problems in mm-hmm. in fifty to sixty years, mm-hmm. right? Meanwhile, these companies they still focus on wealth protection. Mm-hmm. How do you uh, push your ESG policies? Mm-hmm. Their ramah ringkungan. Mm. Knowing full well that it's gonna cause a deficit on their agenda. Fuck them. So you're gonna be like, fuck them. Fuck them. Oh, that's gonna be like super violent, bro. It's, like it's gonna be violent. That's why Indonesia needs someone with iron hands. Mm-hmm. The one thing that's great about Suharto is he had iron hands, mm-hmm. right? We need leader with iron hands. Mm-hmm. Let's say if I were to be president, right? Running a president is simple. Yeah. You want our nation to be fourth most powerful nation by economy, GDP, by 2045 to 2050, right? Mm. So what drives economy in, an, in a country? Productive citizens. What drives productive citizens? Good education. What drives good education? Yang rootnya adalah kesehatan. So there's three main things we need to think about. For our people, mm. kesehatan, because IQ kita 78 for a reason. A lot of stunting happening in Indonesia. Mm-hmm. The, the makan gratis program is actually solving a good problem, but I'll doubt it'll have good execution. And then pendidikan, how fucked up with our education system right now? Merdeka belajar ya. Hmm, fucked up. And what about jobs, right? Look at the sec- formal sector, right? People. Want to work, but they don't have job opportunities. So we're all fucked in these three matters in Indonesia. If you want I- Indonesia citizen to be productive, you gotta fill this tree. So as president, I'll just focus on this tree. And then there are tactical things that you can do: driving FDIs, uh, uh, strengthening our law enforcement. We have a big problem in law enforcement. Tinggal disuap, keluar, gitu kan. And then ESG. Domestic direct investment, and then blah 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 blah. blah. But the main thing is those three things. Ini masalah kesehatan, pendidikan, pekerjaan. Indonesia pasti maju. A 100% per- guarantee you solve those three things. Indonesia pasti maju. Hmm. Because the numbers won't lie when you look at our population, and why in the next 10 years is very important. Karena itu bonus demografi, hmm. where majority of our people are productive. But imagine. Umur kan maju terus kan. Imagine pas when they're productive, 
they don't have jobs, they don't have enough skill to work in a high skill job, and they're sick all the time. The next 10 years, if this is not solved, they become old. When they become old, how do you expect your citizen to be productive and maju in economy? Mm-hmm. When you look at Japan, China, yeah, mereka udah tua-tua. Their economy slows down. Pas kita tua dan kita enggak leverage this 10 years of bonus demography, we're fucked. We're fucked. It's we're fucked. A, I feel like I feel like pada saat ini sih it's a go big or go home. Yeah, go big Karena or go home. Karena kita uh, again as you said we have a bonus demography that means mm. a lot of young people with potential, right? And they And can work. If we can't make the economy big in the next 10 years, mm. it's going to cause a Dem- turn down on everything, right? Yeah. And Japan and China is already experiencing that. Yes. That's why the younger generations are being pushed to to put output that is yeah. two to three times bigger than what they can make. Exactly. Which is why in China, people, uh, there's a social movement in China that they want to make things rot in China. Rot? Yeah, let things rot. Have you heard it? No. So in China, there's a trend in social media mm. where young uh, middle class to upper middle class and uh lower upper class uh sorry uh lower upper class middle class and upper lower class mm. chinese youths they're uh they're pre educated mm. pre high skill because of the demanding output creates a toxic work environment oh i heard okay and then okay, they okay. don't want to work yeah so That is the micro uh, consequences of what happens when a population that is super productive becomes old. Hmm. They start to rely on the younger people yang jumlahnya lebih dikit daripada mereka. Exactly. Yeah. And then, and our situation right now, let me explain it to you guys, is that we're a reverse of that. Hmm. In that most of our population, they're productive. They have potential. So it's either we become the biggest economy in Southeast Asia and probably in Asia beating mm-hmm. China or we become a failed state. Yeah, exactly. That's what I extrapolate from your explanation. Is that exactly and what you're insinuating? 10 years is the window. Uh-huh. 10 to 15 at most is the window. If we don't do things right, mm-hmm. we're fucked. Mm-hmm. We won't be a developed country. Mm-hmm. At most ya yeah, middle middle country lah, kayak tengah-tengah aja lah gitu. Lah. Mm-hmm. Gitu, ya udah. I and mean, that's the reality that we are facing right now. Mm-hmm. What are some uh, major effects of this business elite influence on Indonesia's economy and society? Has there been like any instances where policies and laws are shaped in order to benefit the the elites? Yeah, I think there's too much. If I have to mention everything, yeah. Maybe the okay. recent ones. Recent ones. Mm, not in, there's not one thing in particular, but because everything is focused on politics right now. Yes. Right. Who's gonna get, so this is the, you need airanya bertanam. Yeah. So, okay, kayak gini. Look at the 52 ministers and wakil menterinya and utusan presidennya dan staf susnya and try to do a simple background check on them pernah kerja di mana mm-hmm. pernah jadi supirnya siapa mm. have they ever work on a project with siapa mm. i'll guarantee you 1000% that you'll find at minimum 10 to 20 that have a relationship with the bohirs i can guarantee you that Mm. It's without a doubt, you will find. Asal jago background checking. Yeah. Asal jago background checking. Yeah, yeah. No, I know who's who. Uh, sayang, even if he or she uh, branded as a professional that can work, background check. Dia harus tunduk ke bohir. Katanya. 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 So what if this competent person, even if he or she is competent, makes a decision, not on the best interest of Indonesia, but mm. tolong dong. Ya kan? Mm. Ya. Yeah. You can background check. At least, sampai, at least sampai wakil menterinya deh. You uh. can, you'll, you'll find something. Yeah. 
You'll find something. Most definitely. <laughs> Katanya. Katanya. Opini ya. Gak tahu. Ini baca dari dongeng di mana gitu. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Tapi. Have you ever. Come across a bohir? Uh, yeah. uh, multiple. Beberapa. Ah, how's your experiences with them? Like you don't have to. Tell me like. Who is <laughs> Kita di sini bukan tempo bocor halus. Jadi. <laughs> we're not paid enough. To reveal. National secret. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not paid yeah. enough. <laughs> yeah. Tapi. Not all of them are bad actually. No, I think kayak, mereka kayak mana? Bohir-bohir ini. I think some of them are just inherently uh, they're just competitive. Oh, emang jiwanya competitive ya? Yeah. Most of them pasti competitive. Pasti to get there you need to be ultra competitive, right? Yeah. Some of them are just competitive and they know, ya yeah, mau this is the game. Gitu loh. Uh, like, this is what I need to do. Let's say ya, hypothetically, eh, memang harus suap. Uh, memang harus kasih jam tangan ke pejabat. Memang memang begitu sistemnya gitu loh. Uh, some of them are like that. Uh-huh. But most of them are just plain megalomaniac. Yeah, most of them. Most of like them. literally Lex Luthor yang kita omongin. Yeah, exactly. Like literally. Exactly. Yeah. yeah, jadi gini, Lex Luthor kan punya, they, he have the branding of wanting to do evil things lah gitu loh. Actually gak semuanya want to do evil things, they just want to be richer gitu loh. Oh, they just want to be they richer. They just want to have more power and the only way to be richer in Indonesia, katanya, is to be close with the government. Is to be close with the government. Yeah. Why not become the government? Because then you'll be exposed. Would that be like ultimate power? No, I think you know. Pop. Simple like this. Katanya, mm. the people in the government are just puppets, right? Puppets. So one puppet master can have twenty puppets uh-huh. to thirty, forty, fifty. Would you, Would you rather be the puppet or the puppet master? Mm. And once. Ini the show ya. Yeah. Imagine 20 puppets and then the puppet master. Uh. Once the puppet master goes down and people see, it kind of ruins the power, right? Oh yes. Right? Then, then oh ya, yeah, yeah, dia ini ya. Yeah. Oh, bukannya dia pernah kerja sama ini jadi supirnya. Oh, haven't you worked on a project with him gitu loh. So it better, it's, it's better to be behind, ya. Yeah? Atau every deal needs to be under the table. Hmm. Beats the purpose bro. But like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a contradictory uh, mm. argument here. Mm. Everybody can be the kingmaker, but nobody, mm. but not everyone can be the king. True. Yes. But it also works uh, both ways. Mm. Not everybody can be a kingmaker too. Mm. Okay, I think that statement is a bit uh, for me. It goes both ways. See, it goes both ways. Ah, I see. I see. Everybody can be the king juga. Would you personally want to be the kingmaker or the king? Just be honest. Hmm. I mean, someone asked me the question and I can't answer it to be honest. Not you're not ready yet or actually if if my focus is just impact, yeah. I'll be the kingmaker. You be the kingmaker. Yeah. Uh-huh. But since I'm in the industry of publication and actually benefits uh-huh. me by being public, I might also want to be the king. Yeah. So I think the can, the answer is A king that are made self-made, hmm. maybe yeah. Jadi uh, your outlook regarding this is a bit pragmatic, yeah. Depends uh. on the conditions. Like if the conditions is when, uh, if I need to be behind the scenes, I'll be the kingmaker. If I need to be, if it yeah. benefits me more in public, I'll be king, right? Yeah. I see. I see. Yeah, kayak Batman lah. Mm. What if Bruce Wayne goes to the street and beat up people? <laughs> <laughs> it would, bad, uh, it, the I, optics are bad. The exactly. optics would be super bad, man. Exactly. Yeah. Nah, gitu lah intinya. Uh-huh. Uh, look, uh, depending on the situation lah. Uh, tapi suatu hari, do you wanna be a bohir? By the way, for people who don't know bohir, bohir are like masterminds. Yeah. Yeah. The people who have money, power, and influence. Yeah, they can be like the conglomerates. They can even become politicians. Yeah. They basically like the masterminds. Yeah. Doesn't necessarily mean that they're, you know, the business elites. Even though we're talking about the business elites right now, but mm. mostly <laughs> these people are the business elites. But no. But no. Yeah. Do you wanna be a bohir or mastermind one day? Lebih ke, I have to be a bohir or mastermind. Okay. Kalau ditanya you want, personally no. Uh-huh. Like there's no, gak, gak ada bedanya gitu. Mm-hmm. There's there's no difference in quality of life once you reach, bahkan 100M ke 1 triliun, ke 10 triliun, tuh, there's, there's not much quality of life difference. Gitu loh. Yeah, you, there's no much quality of life difference than you do have right now with normal people. You still shit while sitting. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. You still eat with a spoon. Exactly. Except for nasi padang, bro. Yeah. You have to use hands. Except maybe you also have, you know, one million aura. Ah, uh, yeah. Instant riz. Aura. Instant riz. Yeah. Exactly. Instant riz. You don't have to talk like 
unspoken riz. You see, <laughs> you see somebody you like, you're like. Sure, daddy. Well, tapi ya, you have to. Lebih ke karena I know my purpose is I want to leave something positive for Indonesia. So mm. jawabannya, it's not that I want to, but mm-hmm. I have to. Mm. Yeah. I see. I see. We've been talking about the conglomerates in Indonesia, but we haven't really touched the conglomerates like overseas. Mm. Do you think uh, ini agak menyangkut ke public policy dikit sih? Mm. Um, I think we should incentivize uh, more people to innovate. Oh, definitely. Yes, because if that is so, karena like I'm on the opinion that national prosperity uh, revolves around the financial profit of the elites. Hmm. Right now, national prosperity is just like this because yeah, primary kan, hmm. very extractive. Hmm. Minerals, uh, apalagi, like when you export commodity, uh, you mine, that's very extractive because hmm. those uh, resources are not renewable. Simplenya Korea. Hmm. I know I know where the question is heading to, but the answer is Korea. Hmm. So Indonesia ada BRIN, hmm. Bern Riset dan Inovasi Negara. I think the budget is 6 trillion, next year supposed to be 12 katanya, hmm. that's from what I heard. But it's significantly small compared to Korea. Like they know our ND are the backbone. Namanya kan economy screws domestic product. Mm-hmm. You gotta have great domestic products so you have high gross value, mm-hmm. right? So the government actually already have those, but it's very underutilized. Like they're they're researching awesome shit, bro. Like the researcher that contact contact tech me from Luxembourg is researching about quantum computing, while our minister is blocking VPNs. Right, there's a big problem, right? Okay, so compared to Korea, where the government works together with private sector to help them innovate, Samsung, SNK, and then a few other Samsung, uh, other Korean companies, they actually push the economy a lot. Uh, a lot. Yeah, a lot. Uh, yeah, mm. they push the economy. They contribute to the GDP significantly, especially when they export it to other countries. Karena masalah devisa, because of foreign exchange. Devisa negara itu itu gunanya devisa negara guys. Mm. When uh, so let's cre- let's let's push for the innovation. Of, yeah, innovation, right? We should push for the innovation of tertiary apa uh, technology lah. Let's say yeah, gitu. technology and innovation. That mm. way, that will incentivize bokir bokir itu naro duit di situ. Mm. And then afterwards, mereka naro duit di situ. There's gonna be new bokirs coming from the tertiary side. Mm. Masalah and, gini, the bokir have enough money and resource to put. Their money there. Yeah, they have basically unlimited money mm-hmm. to make something innovative. Yes. Why do they have to? Why? What apa? The pr- the principle the principle is like this, right? You uh. always want as long as you're alive, you always want money. You always want power. Uh. Right. So basically, like if we if we if we are able to convince the bohir bohir to put money in tertiary in nah. the tertiary sector, the question is how Lisa, do we convince them? Mm-hmm. Karena buat mereka kayak gini, there's this theory called innovator's dilemma. And uh-huh. that's what happened with Tupperware before mm-hmm. they are dead lah. Kayak, these bohirs are already uber rich. Mm-hmm. That for them is more beneficial to maintain their wealth instead of risking their wealth. Mm-hmm. Any type of investments, it's risking their wealth, right? Mm-hmm. They have to put something that are not certain. Especially if they're close with the government and they're already very full. From mining and everything, yeah. Why would they want to invest to other place unless the government keluarkan uh, regulasi? So DDI, there's you. We need to allocate a certain percentage of your revenue, of your profits, to reinvest to local in- domestic innovation. Mm-hmm. Unless the government forces them to put the money there. But in this case, when if the government is funded. By these bohirs, why would they let it? Mungkin kayak gini sih, uh, because the bohirs are way too powerful. Kita sekarang berbicara terbuka aja. Ya. Because the bohirs are way too powerful inside the government, hmm. then the carrot and stick approach is not feasible at all. Hmm. We probably need to we probably need to give them more rewards than we need to punish them, right? Unless the president have iron hands. That's the thing I doubt though. 
Mm. Because again, like the the government is fully entrenched with the interest of the Bohirs, right? Mm. So who will the president have to trust? Mm. Did he? The thing is like, if we if we if we if we have a leader that's like super iron hands, uh, and then he starts like uh, he starts like uh, interfering in Bohir interest, mm. that's gonna Bohirs are gonna be like itu sesain tu masalahnya. Who is the president gonna rely on? The military? The exactly. police force. The thing about the police force and the military, they're they're their own political entity here in exactly. Indonesia. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So when we give, when we when we rely on them, we're also giving them more power mm-hmm. to extinguish the interest of the bohir. Mm. And then you know, basically orba mm. nongol lagi gitu. Where the bohirs this time is not the Chindo Taipan, <laughs> mm-hmm. but basically the military generals. So basically, Indonesia is Game of Thrones. It's a, it's a. I've always told people that running a democracy, because come on, uh, whatever we say about Indonesia, right? We're still a democracy. Yeah. We still, we are still able to vote our president up in the office, but then we know in practice, it's rigged because people pay for the votes. Ini udah, ini udah terbuka nih. Okay. Mm-hmm. People literally pay for the vote. Bo- uh, people literally like pay fuck ton of money to get votes. Yeah. Gitu. But then in the end, that's just the consequence of demog- democracy. It's how we regulate the votes, how we have oversight, right? Yeah. So when we run a democracy, I always tell people that we do not choose which one wins, but we choose which one loses. Yeah. Yeah. And in this game, like when we have a president with iron hands and he starts stepping down on the Bohirs, there's going to be a power vacuum. Mm-hmm. Who's going to fill that power vacuum? That's why Lee Kuan Yew, uh-huh. uh, Prime Minister, ex-Prime Minister of Singapore that made Singapore Singapore, said that democracy is a flawed system for developing countries, mm. right? Because there's so much room where if you're emerging country, yeah. what you need is unity. Mm-hmm. Unity in leadership, unity in the people, unity in everything. We focus on one thing and we focus on there. That's it. You need absolute compliance on all sectors and levels of society. Unity. Kalau compliance nanti bilang komunis. Oh sorry, sorry. sorry. <laughs> <laughs> unity, unity. Totaliter. Yeah, yeah. yeah totaliter. Yeah. Jadi, that's the flaw. But it's a flaw that we have to live with. Mm-hmm. Gitu loh. Jadi ada, ada pepatahnya kan, kayak iron hands but golden handcuffs. In the VC world, uh, atau kayak di private equity ya. Yeah. yeah, venture capital. Yeah, venture capital. A startup get invested 10 million dollars. Most of the time are golden handcuffs. Mm. It's gold. But you get handcuffed. You can't do what you really want. It's ultimately for the benefit of the investor, so mm-hmm. they can have capital gain. Mm-hmm. So that's also what happened with us right now. Even if Prabowo have a very strong iron hands, if it's not golden handcuffs, it'll be diamond handcuffs, right? Mm. Then what's the point of having iron hands? So to summarize, we're fucked. We're fucked. <laughs> But Tergantung. one can only hope and pray, so we can't just live out of pessimism, right? Gua ada oh, ide sih. Aja. I have an idea. Apa? Anak-anaknya bohir. Hmm. Kita terbuka aja deh ngobrol-ngobrol. Ini potongan-potongan anak bohir tuh mereka tuh gila-gila kan dengan ide-idenya kan. Iya, yeah, iya, yeah, iya. Yeah. apa punya punya banyak duit, nggak uh. tahu mesti ngapain, duit uh. bapak banyak mm-hmm. gitu. Ya pasti they want to explore, uh, they want to explore like crazy ideas. Yeah. Why don't we convince these anak-anak bohirs to give us money so we can improve the innovation department? Instead of asking them for money, why not they drive those money? So we're not asking them to give us money, but uh-huh. hey, you have money. Do you want to help you incubate your idea for this AI startup? Do you uh, want yeah, incubate, to, incubates. Right? Yeah, right? I, fuck, I forgot the uh, wording, incubate, yeah. Jadi kayak, those, it's actually a good idea if uh-huh. we are, we have close relations with those anak-anak. Yeah. Kind of this one of my investment thesis, right? With yeah. my fund, hopefully next year, yeah. Uh, with family businesses going to second to third generations, most uh-huh. of the kids itu gak mau lanjutin. So, we help them separate the role of a shareholder and as a professional. So let us help professionalize your business, but you still own the business, it's yeah. still your business, you know. But you can, you get to see your baby uh, grow 
it doesn't have to be your son or daughter uh-huh. yang lanjutin gitu loh. Iya. Yeah. Jadi it's one of our thesis uh, investment. So might be a solution juga with the Bohirs. Yeah. If you know one, yeah, let's have a coffee. Yeah, let's have a, let's have if, a coffee, guys. If you guys are the son or daughter or mm. cucu or cicit dari Bohirs in Indonesia and I know you know who you are, call me. Call, yeah. call him, call him. Call yeah. us, man. Yeah. <laughs> call, call him most specifically. He has more ideas than me. I'm just probably gonna extract more money. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. But I wanted to say, uh, like, uh, I was thinking on a on also on a political paradigm as well. Mm. The reasoning with why we ask them for money is to spread out the control, so mm. they don't completely control everything. But even the son and daughters of Bohirs won't let go of their power. See, kind of, they, they are taught that way. I, of course. I, and I spoke with some of them. Right? It is inherent that since birth, the values of the Bohir is uh, brainwashed to their son and daughters. Some mm-hmm. don't uh, follow the religion, that, but some are the embedded. Fundamentals, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the fundamentals. Fundamentals, yeah. Mereka diajarin dari mm-hmm. kecil. Like, don't I, lose power. Yeah, and that's the thing I feel like uh, with all the political and business elites, the, the son and daughters of political mm-hmm. and business elites that I find, is that even though they disagree with the ideology of the parents, the method stays the same. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the yeah. methods stay the same. Yeah. They disagree with their grandpa's uh, political mongering but they're also like creating uh, projects and medias that feeds upon people's perception and narrative. Yeah, simple. Okay. Bisnisnya pengen lancar, suap. Iya. Yeah. Pengen lolos apa, suap. Gitu yeah. Iya. But it's already embedded sih. Baik lagi sih, kalau misalkan, if we want to push for this idea, uh, we can't only think on a public policy scope. We also think about the politics as well and mm. how it profits them. Yeah. Ujung-ujungnya ya, we give more power to the uh, to the to the bohirs untuk pindah sektor. Yeah, so so more on a of a carrot strategy lah. With the yeah, bohir, more on ya. a carrot strategy. Karena oh. stick udah nggak bisa lagi di sini. Yeah, stick udah nggak bisa. Uh-uh. So intinya gini, let's figure out how to make the bohir richer that also benefits Indonesia. Like yeah, that also benefits I, 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 Indonesia. Okay, okay. So that part we can. Both agree. Yeah, we agree. might be the solution. Yeah, right. Karena let's let's just talk about it realistically. Like, hmm. kita uh, orang yang kaya itu selalu punya power, hmm. dan we can't mau lo seratus ribu orang. Kalau misalkan perut mereka kosong, hmm. dibayar seratus ribu juga mau, gitu. Hmm, bener. Untuk mereka berkhianat. Hmm. Yang penting kan makan. Yang penting kan duit. Yeah. Jadi hmm. daripada kita ngelawan, kita ikutin. Tapi kita juga kasih unjuk mereka nih, lu juga bisa bagi-bagi kita bisa make more money than this benar gitu benar ya yeah, itu realitanya lah uang itu kuasa nah, yeah. kenapa 98 separa itu ya karena orang kelaparan iya yeah. tapi sekarang anggap situasinya sama and and it happen now gitu loh mm. bansos oh udah ya ujungnya bansos bansos yeah. bansos sampai kenyang. sampai jeblok kenyang. apa ben <laughs> yeah, sampai jeblok <laughs> sampai ya, jeblok oh ya udah gue kenyang gue mau yeah. demo gitu misalnya <laughs> <laughs> ya tapi ya itu karena praktek politik itu sudah sejauh itu sih ya yeah, benar thank god kita punya presiden yang politiknya jago banget <laughs> <laughs> you have to admit he's a mastermind yes I have to admit gila sih yeah. he's crazy 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 good gue tetap hats off ya yeah. hats off sih he's like super good man But I also like to give credit where credit is due, right? Mm. Most of it is not, uh, some of it is not because of him, but mm. it's also the people around him as well. Oh, that's, itu yeah. udah definitely true. Hats off. So Kayak, the people who on a daily basis ngebisikin sesuatu, you will get influence. Yeah. Itu mungkin one of the reasons, even if I got offered a position in the government, gitu, I would reject. Karena I know I would be influenced. Yes. Udah pasti. Gitu loh. Lu bakal masuk gerbongnya siapa gitu. Ya, yeah, atau yeah. kayak, Eh, tapi ini bagus loh, ini jelek loh. Uh. Every single day, the people around you will, you will get corrupted. In the mm-hmm. That's why I don't want to go into the government sekarang. Mm-hmm. So it's a kind of a clear statement for me. I don't want to go into politics in the next, in any near term. You know. mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Sebenarnya per- dari tadi yang kita bahas itu uh, ada pertanyaan yang gue pengen ngomongin sih. Mm-hmm. Like what sort of regulations that we can propose in order to sekat-sekat the business elite from political interests? Hmm. And we determined that it's practically impossible. Simple. But, Dan udah ada depan mata. Iya, yeah, apa? Perampasan aset. Perampasan aset. So you cut the corruption practices and the bohir will have no power. Ah, 
udah that's it. Tapi caveatnya di situ uh, siapapun yang semua orang itu nggak mau ada perampasan aset. Nah karena itu ya kenapa? Soalnya the bokir is uh, mereka bad poor interest for them. Dan nggak hanya bokir juga. Uh-uh. Uh, I feel like damn I'm gonna get I'm gonna get, <laughs> kita bicara Bisa. terbuka aja deh ya. Yeah, okay. Cause like you're literally here my podcast uh-huh. and like nobody's willing to touch you man. So like oh. you being in my podcast and people watching it like it would protect me as well. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to say it. Bro. I'm going to say it loud, man. All right. And make sure you broadcast the pos- this podcast to everybody so <laughs> everyone will see and so there's like enough media attention to protect me from okay. harm. Okay. So birokrasi kita pada dasarnya sifatnya maling. <laughs> ya, emang. Dan emang enggak hanya bohir aja tapi ya Bohir oke, okay. bohir itu mereka necessary ya, uh. but they're not necessarily corrupt. Yang korup yeah. itu middle management. Iya yeah, benar. Iya yeah. dan the middle management, I'm not gonna say whom ya, tapi the middle management itu they far outnumber the upper management. Oh itu benar. That's they're true. the ones that actually puts the people on top, not just the bohir as well. Uh. Gitu. The middle management is like super crazy fucking powerful gitu, and they're yeah. out for their own interest. Yeah. Mereka nggak bergerak dengan satu agenda ya, tapi bener. kayak ya udah mereka mikirin dirinya sendiri gitu. Benar, benar. And so like, justru menurut gua perampasan aset itu lebih lebih ini apa lebih mentargetkan middle management ini. Hmm, benar. Iya dan. Oh mereka yang nggak mau. Nah kalau misalkan. Tapi most of them juga influenced by the Kongos lah. Obviously kan. Huh. Yeah. Tapi kalau misalkan kayak gitu ya, the caveat is mereka nggak mau karena kalau misalkan kayak gitu, menurut gue ya pemerintahan pusat itu menjadi kuat dan hmm. siapapun uh, lembaga perampasan aset itu akan dibuat dan jatuh di jurisdiksi dan tanggung jawab siapa, dia akan menjadi pria terseram di Republik Indonesia setelah Beni Murdani hmm. dan AM Hendro Priyono. Hmm. Wow. <laughs> hmm. Benar, benar. <laughs> iya. Ya, tapi, Jadi makanya hmm. perampasan aset itu nggak akan dilos. Nah makanya kalau kayak yeah. gini, pokoknya any regulation that hinders corruption lah intinya kayak gitu. Uh, bureaucracy is actually not a bad thing tau. Iya. Yeah. Bureaucr- bureaucracy is built so you have governance. Uh-huh. Biar jelas siapa ke siapa, laporannya kemana. Tapi when bureaucracy happens at the cost of being effective and efficient, and you don't have a specific team that does the bottlenecking, mm-hmm. Then ya you, know, you can't do it. You can't do shit gitu loh. Mm. It takes one month untuk mendistribusikan makan siang gratis ke satu sekolah. Mm. Misalnya kayak gitu. And cost-nya jadi satu makanan 50.000. Yes. Nah, itu. That's the core problem. Ini kan Pak Berpau bilang kayak siapapun yang setuju keluar dari pemerintahan. I'm not in the government. So, I'm criticizing on the execution of makan gratis. I have to support the government because I'm a government buzzer. <laughs> buzzer, buzzer, buzzer. Dia yang, dia yang ngatur seribu akun yang ngejelekin gua. Uh, oh yeah, we actually have a rivalry going on. Tapi hmm. like every other political rivalry, it's all set up. <laughs> it's, it's all just setting up. The final question. What do you think is the long-term implications for extractive uh, business-business yang bersifat ekstraktif? kepada kemajuan dan kemakmuran Indonesia lapangan pekerjaan that's it then would you say like uh, we can feel the impact now yeah. uh, per 1% GDP growth sekarang compared to 10 years ago creates one third to one fifth of the jobs mm-hmm. right karena kalau ekstraktif lu gak butuh banyak orang ya lu punya 10 lu jual aja keluar gitu kan mm-hmm. right tapi kayak gini if jobs are not created Yeah, people will have no money. People when people have no money, ekonomi lesu. Ekonomi lesu, buying power reduce. Pengusaha kena dampaknya. Yeah. Massive layoff, no job. Hmm. Ekonomi lesu, massive. Udah, setan. And then goodbye Indonesia, goodbye Mas 2045. Ya udah. So jobs itu satu satu komponen penting. Hmm, I see. So we need jobs. And then pendidikan and kesehatan, ya itu aja lah, simple. You are surprisingly very nationalistic, you know, for a capitalist. <laughs> <laughs> for for a Chindo too. For a Chindo too, you're yeah, surprisingly uh, nationalistic, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's I plan to die here. Jadi kayak ya udahlah. That's yeah. insane. Quick can gi shit man. <laughs> <laughs> One day we're gonna have a Raymond Chin business school man. It's like a quote from uh, Batman, yeah. 
So Bruce Wayne will die and the person dies with it. The name will die with it. Mm. But if you use a symbol like Batman, it can live forever. Mm. So it's in a way, uh, anecdotally, do something that is it not, doesn't necessarily need to be your name, but the impact people will feel and remember for hundreds and years to come. And hopefully that's something that I can, I can do for Indonesia. Mm. Yeah. Did you watch Viva Vendetta? No. There is a, it's basically like Batman, but more brutal. Oh, yeah? Set, yeah, it's set in the UK. Okay, watch this. Yep. V for Vendetta. Watch this. V for Vendetta. You know, you want to know what, uh, the main character is V. He's like a revolution, uh, revolutionary, mm-hmm. like a revolutionary Batman mm-hmm. uh, who fights a fascist uh, English government. Not British, yeah, English government. English government, okay. Yeah. Uh, so he, during the climax, Uh, he said that men die, but ideas are bulletproof. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. And that's the kind of vibe that I'm getting from what you're explaining to me is that you want to become an idea. And yeah. what's so funny about that analogy is that uh, Axel once posted a picture of the three of us, right? Yeah. Did you see that? O- on li- oh, the stories. On, on stories, stories. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I remember. Yeah. Yeah. We weren't posing for a picture, but somebody took a picture of uh, three of us, right? Oh, it's, it was him. Oh, it was I said y- Axel, he, he oh. took the picture and- <laughs> Ah, I see, oh, yeah. I see, I see. Yeah, 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 yeah. So basically, uh, somebody said that all three of us were Batman characters. Oh. <laughs> Guess which one are you? Batman characters? Yeah. Uh, hopefully Batman. Well, I gotta, I'm sorry to break your uh, beans <laughs> right here. I'm sorry to spill your beans here, but like you're, you were Jim Gordon. Jim Gordon. Yes. No, I just bought this Batman Rolex, so. Oh, I'm, wow. Can I'm, I see it? I'm embodying oh, the wow. Batman. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Of course. It's a Rolex. I gotta, I gotta, I gotta wipe my hands first. No need, bro. I gotta, before touching. It's not that, ex- that any, expensive. Uh, before touching any great watch, you gotta wash your hands. Yeah. AP, Richard Miller, Mil, yeah, Mil. Yeah. This, yeah. Uh, Batman. Wow. So I don't understand anything about watches, but uh, this brand, Lux House, invited me to yeah. uh, come there for a campaign collaboration. Uh-huh. They want to endorse me, yeah, me endorsing them, right? Going there and then see a few watches. Oh, I like this one. What is one? Batman, right? Uh-huh. Oh, I like Batman. So I just bought it. On. <laughs> you bought it? <laughs> yeah, I bought I, it. I thought they gave it for you for free. I was like, oh, damn, this this place was going to give you no, Rolex no, no, for free. No. I, I bought it. <laughs> I bought this one. Uh, One day after I visited the place, because ah, I see, uh, I see, I see. negotiations are long, uh, scope of work and everything. Uh, let me buy it first. What so can okay. you learn from Batman? Batman? Yes. Because he's the only superhero that doesn't have superpower. Ah, Probably, yeah. yeah. Not the only this one, but the most the uh, most prominent superhero with no superpower, mm. right? The superpower is money, right? If you watch the whole, you don't need to watch the whole DC uh, universe to yes. understand that how Batman becomes the leader. Mm-hmm. Uh, padahal dia paling krocho. <laughs> dia paling krocho I can't lah, believe you said it. that about my like, bro. Like Batman, super, yeah. Superman could just, and yeah. it's gone. Uh-huh. But how did became, he became a leader? How did every single superhero respected him to lead Justice League? Because he's got Riz. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm kidding. Aura, I'm kidding. Aura, he's got aura. Aura is, aura is, yeah. is insane. But yeah. that's exactly the thing. Because uh-huh. you have iron, Will and integrity, and not integrity, iron will. He's got big cojones. Yeah, we have cojones, bro. Big cojones. So for, will, for Indonesians that don't understand cojones, it means balls. Yeah, he has big cojones. balls. Yeah. And the power of will. Will. Right? So for someone who doesn't have a lot compared to other superheroes, but he can achieve that just by sheer will. There's this one episode in DC, right? Uh, You know the the Green Lantern? Yes. Uh, yeah, I hope, yeah, I think, yeah, I forgot. There's yeah. different color, different emotions, uh, right? Yellow is fear, yeah. uh, red is anger, uh, green is hope. Green is hope, right? Yeah. I think I remember- Hope or bravery, something like that. Then uh, Batman, this one episode, Batman got a hold of the ring and become the most powerful lantern, right? Wow. He was a power of will. Uh. Turns out it's the most powerful emotion in human history. But in psychology, there's two emotions that are strong, fear and hope. Right, negative and positive forces, right? But will is something like that'll it'll it'll keep you going even things are like shit. Mm. And to say to look at Indonesia right now, I don't think a lot of people have that grit. People mm. gave up so easily. They uh, undermine themselves that I don't have enough money, I don't have enough connection to do things. But the fact that Batman become the leader of Justice League, 
with no superpowers, just money. Yeah, that's something to be applauded for. And mm. I think as a figure, we need more Batmans in Indonesia. So, okay. Would you want to be uh, somebody that helps people like Batman or somebody that helps people like Bruce Wayne? Uh, Batman. So you want to dress in a bat costume and beat up like random psychos that yeah. needs like yeah. therapy, <laughs> yeah. man? Yeah. I want to wow. beat up. You must, but, but my mom doesn't let me beat <laughs> someone. You must I, was, I was supposed to beat someone up. <laughs> <laughs> you, wow. You must have a lot of anger issues, man. Uh, I'm chill. I'm chill. Okay. We're good. So, we're good. Okay. Sportsmanship, bro. My, uh, my question is, um, you said like a lot of people in Indonesia, right? Mm. They lack an, uh, you said... Uh, because people don't have connections, they don't have money, they don't have opportunity, uh, they mm. they instantly lose hope, right? Mm -hmm. uh, that insinuates that the Indonesian people are far away from the elites. Yeah, very uh, far. Very far away. And are you willing to be open to like uh, connect the people with the elites and all of that? Oh, definitely. And like in true, what form do you want to connect people? More, more on, instead of, so connecting them takes two efforts, right? Mm. Getting the elites to come down, force them to invest, force them to give jobs, force them, we need to get them down. Mm -hmm. And then giving hope for the grassroots to go up. So the thing with Batman, again, yeah, Bruce Wayne, in a corrupt city like Gotham, let's say Gotham is Indonesia. Oh, which, yeah, it yeah. definitely is. <laughs> <laughs> da -da 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 -da. What can you do as Bruce Wayne when there's so much elites and so much criminality, so much anarchy. What can you do as Bruce Wayne that are immune to, let's say, character assassination? You as a person, as Bruce Wayne, you uh. have a lot to lose. Your company, your name, your reputation. So Indonesia is Gotham, right? Maybe to fix things, we cannot be part of the system. Mm. But in this case, Batman is criminal, like vigilante. Yeah, right? vigilante. If I became Batman, like I'm already jailed like, what, months ago when I <laughs> made a public video about Prabowo and Jokowi. <laughs> like like they'll, they'll, they'll background check me. Uh, right? Yeah. Tapi kalau kata gue sih, Bruce Wayne kurang CSR aja sih. Tapi kayak the uh, let's move let's uh, let's move a bit to Batman ya, yeah. Batman yeah. mythos ya. Menurut tuh kayak Batman, right? As Bruce Wayne, because we all know that Batman doesn't consider himself Bruce Wayne. He considers Batman himself, yeah. right? Yeah. As Bruce Wayne, why doesn't he? Uh, have you ever thought kayak um? Batman, you're fucking rich. Why don't you CSR CSR an aja udah? Or you run for office and then like you give, you you build schools, hospitals and shit. Like you have fuck ton of money to like yeah. deal with Gotham's problem just like this, right? You know, Batman is not that rich, you know. Batman is not that rich? It's only a few billion. So the, really? the net worth index for superhero, he's not that rich. Yeah. I mean, let's say Indonesia, you have 10 trillion. Yeah. Atau 20 trillion, right? Can you with confidence say that 10 trillion bisa ngubah Indonesia jadi lebih baik? Uh, I feel like you would have access to a lot of facilities and people though. Tapi it would be a, it would be an uphill battle. With 10 trillion, yes. would you be able to end corruption in Indonesia? I would say it would make corruption worse. Can you solve the incompetent ministers and pejabat di Indonesia? They, Batman can become a minister. Yeah, but one out of well, 52, You're right. right? Yeah. So there's always a limit when you're talking about materialistic uh, thing to solve things. There's always going to be a limit. Mm -hmm. Even if he's a hundred billionaire, there's always going to be a limit. So sometimes the solution is, yeah, you need to fix it out of the system. Mm. Right. Udah pasrah with where the government is right now. I'll just do what I can do. Mm. That's it. And it's out of the system, right? I see. Gue jadi curiga deh. Uh, kita boleh cek nggak di berita ada orang pakai kostum hewan muter-muter di Jakarta uh, ngegebugin begal atau mungkin pejabat korup nggak ya? Ada di Tanjung Duren itu gue. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Jadi itu siapa tuh namanya tuh? Siapa tuh? Oh ya, Botmon. Botmon. But seriously though, the like still random question. Like if you're a superhero. What mm. kind of superpower do you have? And 
like w- how would you conceptualize your arch nemesis like who would be your arch nemesis uh superman and lex luthor mungkin ya oh you would be like superman you want to be superman uh if batman have superman's power and ya udah tapi if batman have superman power batman wouldn't be as respected as he is right now uh yeah uh, he'd be worshiped as a god yeah. And yeah that's it that's it there's no you know what makes batman batman is It's hard to be Batman. Yes. Nggak punya kekuatan, cuma punya duit dan lain-lain gitu loh. That's why people respect the character. The character is very strong. Mm. But Superman have everything. Mm. Jadi kayak orang more fans to Batman than Superman gitu. Iya, karena Superman itu terlalu perfect. Dia itu bisa menyelesaikan masa Israel Palestina dengan gini. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Tapi in the case of Superman and Lex Luthor, it's about values mostly. Yeah? Yes. Both have different powers lah. Let's say. Yes. Tapi this one stands for good. This one stands for evil. Okay. Gitu. Yeah. Lex, the thing about Lex Luthor itu uh, kalau lo pikir-pikir juga, like he's not uh, he's not necessarily evil. Uh, not necessarily evil. Tapi yeah. He's a megalomaniac. He's a megalomaniac. A trait that a lot of CEO seem to have. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Steve Jobs, for example. Yeah. Steve Jobs right. is one of them. Hitler yeah. is the most notorious one. Yeah, yeah, but he didn't end up becoming a CEO though. Yeah. He ended up becoming Führer of Germany. Yeah. <laughs> We talk about elites, right? Mm. And Batman, Batman, Bruce Wayne, he's an elite of Gotham, right? Mm. And the topic that we were supposed to talk today before I decided to <laughs> just go off the rail is basically uh. talk about elites, right? What's, yeah. it, what's, what's, <laughs> what's the thing here? Like, uh. what's your tattoo? What does that mean? Ya, kita mulai dari sini dulu ya. Uh-huh. Ini walaupun haram nih. This itu apa nih? Gajah, gajah. Gajah. Oh, Ganesha. Gajah. Yeah. Nggak, gajah itu one of the most social, uh, if not the most social um, animal in history. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. They care for each other gitu loh. Satu mati, yang satu sedih gitu. Mm-hmm. So, helps remind me that I'm not living alone. I'm not the center of everything. Mm-hmm. Kalau ini, ceritanya dijebak mantan, udah. So she told me it's a non-temper, non, <laughs> non, uh, okay. it's a temporary tattoo, uh-huh. but ended up being permanent. I so, <laughs> what? That's it. She left a permanent mark on you, man. Exactly. Yeah. So, uh, fun factnya, ni kalau cewek-cewek, maybe kayak sulam alis, <laughs> right? <laughs> Awalnya tuh tatonya kayak gitu. Iya. Yeah. Gak hilang-hilang, bro. Gak hilang-hilang. Hilang. Hilangnya satu tahun, tapi udah tiga tahun gak hilang. Ya udahlah, gue timpa lah. Ajir. Dulu timpa pakai apa? Timba pakai ya yeah, baru permanent tattoo. Oh, Jadi, emang awalnya tattoo-nya ini, apa? Ini, uh, segitiga doang sih. Oh, segitiga Masa doang. doang. Sampai sekarang bikin kayak gini. Ini artinya transcendence kita. Gitu. Those uh, what you see on top doesn't represent everything that happened di bawahnya. Ah, the Kaya iceberg always, theory. Yeah, reminds me that whatever you see when I'm meeting people, what they have, their successes, it doesn't. It only represented a minute part of their life. So you are no one to judge them. Intinya kayak gitu. Yeah, don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah, although it's still important to judge a book by its cover. Ah, uh, kalau misalnya covernya jelek, orang nggak bakal baca di dalamnya gitu. How so do you cover is still important? Judge me, judge me, judge you. Hmm. Yeah, buzzer pemerintah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Critical, critical, and one of the first that discusses heavy topics. Jadi lu double minority tau. Topiknya heavy, bahasa Inggris lagi. Masih mending kalau bahasa Inggris, tapi topiknya entertainment kayak Bobby Saputra. Ah uh, yeah. Nah. Tapi Bobby Saputra sendiri ada satire. Iya, satire. Gue gitu baru ya. bahas ini kemarin sama Excel kan. Uh. Tapi gue tentang Bobby Saputra itu nggak mendalam. Karena gue hmm. ngebahas tentang uh, satire itu... Uh, mengacu kepada konten gue dan konten dia, kelas rakyat kan. Uh. Dan gue bilang kepada dia, uh, tokoh-tokoh kayak Bobby Saputra dan Sastra Silalahi itu. Hmm. Ya, Sastra Silalahi kan kayak cogan-cogan gitu kan. Hmm. Kalau misalkan Bobby Saputra ya, ya, Ben Sumadiwiria, ya, hmm. itu dia Bobby Saputra kan. Hmm. It reveals, satire itu reveals resentment. Hmm. Ya. Yeah. Who does satire, who, kayak, because people follow that shit, right? Hmm. People write satire from spite. Hmm. Bahkan si Axel sendiri bilang bahwa, dia itu lagi kesel sama sesuatu, sama hmm. sesuatu di dalam masyarakat atau pemerintah, dia tulis hmm. gitu. Literally me, gue lagi kesel dengan, I'm, I'm talking disclaimer, I'm talking out of character at this point, right? So I, I probably gotta take this off. <laughs> so, yeah. so, so, semua apa, gue itu menuliskan sesuatu dari spite, hmm. and then ya udah gue gua keluarin, hmm. gitu. Nah, uh, I feel like, I feel like uh, whatever Bobby is doing, 
reveals a resentment towards a certain class of society. Mm. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna name names which class of society, but probably because if if we deep dive if we uh. deep dive about this, this is interesting, right? Uh. Would you argue our e- economic growth is bigger? Yeah. Kita growing terus. Kita growing terus kan. Yeah. But uncontrolled economic growth leads to kesenjangan kan. Mm. Yeah kan because there is no regulation to to apa to mm. keep the money uh, to spread the money around to spread the mm. wealth it doesn't concentrate on one place kan. Gini rasio kita at its worst since 2018. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So basically more people are uh, more the people, rich are getting richer. The richer the are getting, getting richer poorer. and the poor are getting poorer. It's yeah. not because people have more money or less money it's because the inflation of the money. Mm. Yeah kan? Is that is that how economics work? Lebih ke kayak gini, ekonomi kita tetap growing, mm. which for me doesn't make sense what itu. Yeah. Middle class turun, buying power turun, uh-huh. angka kemiskinan memburuk yeah. dan lain-lain gitu. So where is this growth coming from? Is basically orang yang punya satu triliun jadi seratus triliun. Iya, yeah, iya, yeah, iya. Yeah, Dibanding yeah. beberapa ratus ribu orang yang naik dari sepuluh ribu ke seratus ribu, mm. tetap gede dengan triliun kan? Iya. Yeah. So when you see economic growth, yeah. it doesn't represent welfare. Iya. Yeah. It represents Just certain people just getting richer. Yes, I agree. And spending more. And yeah. the case in Indonesia, just rich people are getting more richer. That's yes. It. And the fact that Bobby Saputra creates a uh, satire for mm. rich chindos, yeah. Mm. Uh, satire against rich chindos mm. and people I, by the Actually, shit. I first, I, initially I thought it was satire for rich chindo until he posted with some of the rich chindos. So uh, I don't think that's satire. I think I think some of the rich chindos like they realize they're being satire, but they're they're cool about it. They're chill. You no, know? like they. Okay, this is gonna be a long discussion, but I don't think it's satire because he associated himself and became friends with the rich chindos, right? I mean, yang kemarin berapa puluh juta views itu. Pada basicnya dia emang 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 dia permainan emang, dia di situ kan? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised, but. His his con the the following people the the people that follows him, right? They watch that shit because they realize there is a disrespectsy disres this ada sebuah kes, kesenjangan dalam masyarakat uh. in terms of wealth uh. that he is trying to mock. Oh, yeah, well, that might be true. And that's yeah. why that's why people are people buy and snort that shit. Mm. Justru Bobby Saputra itu menunjukkan bahwa ada kesenjangan ekonomi di dalam masyarakat Indonesia. Yeah, but most people don't understand. <laughs> most people don't gitu. understand. Yeah. I feel like people understand, tapi from a subconscious level. Subconscious level. Yeah. Do you yeah. do you do you realize that? I realize, but it's not as strong as uh, Axel, misalnya, or you, uh, misalnya. Karena most of it, I see it as just entertainment. Even uh, gua aja nggak ngeliat itu sebagai ada hidden message-nya, gitu. Uh, Only some. It's. I feel like it's less that what Bobby's trying to the message that Bobby's trying to convey, but more about what people think it mm. might convey. Mm. Yeah. Then it's multi tafsir, and susahnya multi tafsir. Those are just opinions. Those just are just susah. opinions. With satire, even if you penetrate the whole Indonesia mm-hmm. because it's multi tafsir, it'll never be seen as the truth. Itu, mm. sus, itu 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 the, the bad thing about satire sebenarnya. Mm-hmm. It'll reach a lot of people, but it'll never be seen as the truth. Mm. Karena multi tafsir. I see. And people usually listen or act like it's the ultimate truth if you just directly say it. Gitu, mm. But most people nggak berani directly say it. Gitu. Yes, because yeah. we got we got regulations <laughs> in our government that prevents us from doing so. So please don't try that at home. Right. Right. Lo punya 16 personalities gak? INTJ. Lo INTJ? Iya. Yeah. I. I. INTJ. Iya. Yeah. Oh. Makanya to be fair ya, to be fair ini gua mau punya jujur nih. Yeah. Kita podcast lumayan lama, gua udah lumayan capek. <laughs> <laughs> ini gua jujur aja kalau INTJ yeah, yeah. itu kayak gitu. Iya, yeah, sama. Uh. Gua juga INTJ. Oh, lo INTJ juga? Iya. Yeah. Gua yeah. INTJ. Uh. <laughs> gua INTJ. <laughs> <laughs> Tapi kalau gua kalau gua ini Gue yang TP. Beda beda beda. Ya, tapi gue emang harus gue akuin sih. Kelamaan podcast dulu ya, apalagi dulu dulu. Mm. Mm. Kalau misalkan gue kelamaan podcast, gue gue malah ngantuk. Yeah. Jadi if you see my earlier podcast, gue kayak kayak gini aja gitu. Nah sayangnya gue lagi kayak tuh, jadi kelamaan pun gue nggak ngantuk. Ah uh, ya, isi isi isi. Kalau dulu ngantuk kan? Emang gitu. itu sih ya, kayak the the curse of us introverted people ya. Iya. Yeah. I see your That's INTJ. Okay. INTJ. Ah, I see, I see, I see, I see. Naturally introverted. Uh. Makanya kayak 
fuck the people yang bilang introvert nggak bisa jadi sosial itu bukan nggak ada hubungannya sama introvert nggak ada hubungannya gak sama bukan. sekali orang aja ngira gue oh super extrovert man padahal hmm. no man I'm very introverted and the reason why people think I might be extrovert is because I don't meet a lot of people Hmm. Jadi sekali yang gue ketemu sama orang ya udah social battery gue habis di situ. Nah, ya sama sama. Oh, oh. Nah, kemarin pas polarisasi semua kesikal gue nggak banyak ngobrol sama orang. Gue di corner nyebat aja. Hmm. <laughs> Tapi as an INTJ, as a fellow INTJ, do you have like girl problems? <laughs> uh, back then ya. Yeah. Uh. Sekarang not so much. Sekarang I have a wife problem. Call girl sih no. Tapi wife problem, susah cari wife. Wife, ya. Yeah. Soalnya different ya, you wanna find pacar sama wife itu berbeda banget. Uh. Itu loh, jadi ya, itulah. I see. Well, if you guys think yourselves as uh, great wife materials, check out the smoking hot bachelor right here. Sweet, sweet. Yeah, the broke finance bro ya. Why are you? Why do you keep on calling yourself the broke finance bro, man? You come on, man, get out of here. You're not broke. Look yeah. at you, bro. You got Rolex, Batman. Strateginya <laughs> adalah merendahkan serendah rendahnya agar tidak bisa direndahkan. Ah, ya, yeah. merendahkan untuk yeah. meroket ya. Gak usah meroket. Yang penting gak bisa direndahkan. Itu dulu deh. Lu harus sih jangan buka kartu. <laughs> <laughs> Jadinya orang-orang ntar bakal terus kayak gitu. gitu. Apa, soalnya <laughs> I'm mostly transparent about this kind of things. So uh, if you guys want to use that strategy, go ahead. Uh, it's better untuk merendahkan agar tidak direndahkan uh, dibanding sok meninggi-ninggikan diri gitu loh. Yeah, take social tips from an yeah. introvert. Yeah, introvert. Always works, man. Pengen hidupnya tenang. Yeah. Iya. Gitu. I see, I see. Anjay, it's been a very long podcast. Huh? Very long podcast. Uh, very stoic ya yeah, lu. Very stoic. I'm actually very cynical. Yeah. Ya, yeah, jadi kalau lu kan stoic lebih kepada live by virtue kan. Uh. Kalau gua lebih kepada fuck social norms. Uh. Ah. Yeah. Ya. So I'll be steered towards being a contrarian daripada uh, just following ini kan. Yeah, pretty much. Tapi yeah, I can see the value of stoicism as well. It's because stoicism controls how you react towards yeah. things in a way. Yeah. Peace of mind lah. Yeah, peace of makanya mind. Makanya makin ngurus ini makin cari peace of mind matters more than any amount of money that you hmm. can find. You're 30, right? 30 this year, yeah. Uh, so this you're a millennial. Millennial. When is your birthday? 7 Desember. You're a Sagittarius. Sagittarius. Ah. Nah, gue gak ngerti gitu-gitu, jadi gue ngerti what that means. Kalau Feng Shui, you know. You don't follow Feng Shui? Uh, anjing. Lo oh, anjing? Anjing, siu anjing. Wah. <laughs> I, wanna yeah. make, I wanna make a joke from that. Yeah. Tapi kayak, fuck, never mind man. <laughs> yeah. Nah, yeah. gue gak percaya lah. Kalau yang bagus gue aminin, kalau yang jelek gue gak dengerin. Udah intinya kayak gitu. I see. Well, it's been a very long conversation. Sebenarnya ini episodenya ada. <laughs> Ada subject ya, yeah? tapi kayaknya kita off the rails banyak banget deh. Off the rails. So instead of making it like uh, true rulers of Indonesia, how national elites control policy, we uh, we probably name this episode one and a half hour with Raymond Chin. <laughs> the same way I do with Raditya Dika and Ario Bayu as well. Yeah, uh, bakal rame nggak tuh? Uh, ya. Yeah. Dibanding kalau misalnya judulnya. Persetan, pip. Wah, itu pasti rame bro. I guess ya, yeah. I guess ya. Yeah. Perset. <laughs> Pak Ciputra. <laughs> Aduh, udah punya perumahan di BSD, punya rumah di kota wisata. Bangke nih Sinarmas sih, mana-mana nih. Gue sampai ke IKN nih, ada perumahan Sinarmas. I'm gonna flip my shit, man. <laughs> uh, Iya, pasti ada. Pasti ada ya. Pasti Mungkin ada. itu tujuannya ya. <laughs> Gue kesono ada maya pada hospital. I'm gonna flip my shit man. Udah pasti ada. Ada ciputra bol. I'm gonna flip my shit man. Pasti ada. Ada. But anyways. Alright. Thanks for watching our one hour and a half podcast. Wow, it's been an amazing talk with you. Thank you very much for coming today, Raymond. Thank you so much. Yeah. Lo nggak get back to character dulu? Oh Lo, shit. Yeah, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Salam dong. Let's do this one more time. Thank you very much for watching this one and a half hour with Raymond Chin. Thank you very much, Raymond Chin, Thank for you so coming. Much. Oh, whoa, whoa, almost, almost, almost. Come on. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, make sure to if you guys want to leave what you guys think, uh, just join my Discord server. A link is on the description. Share this video, like this video. Don't forget to fucking subscribe, fuckers. I keep on seeing 98% of my watchers are not subscribe. How the fuck do I do that? Give me tips, man. Don't be a buzzer. Oh, okay. Because users don't follow buzzer. Okay, <laughs> okay, I guess so, I guess so. I'm, okay, so 
with what he said this year, this year's resolution, I'm gonna stop being a buzzer because Joko is not president anyways. Gerbongo de cabut, boss. I hope Prabowo takes me though. But anyways, yeah. Uh, thank you very much, Raymond Chin, for coming my to my pleasure, podcast bro. today. And uh, for giving me a virgin experience of having a full podcast in mostly English. In mostly English. Yeah, our podcast is mostly English. Ah, right? yeah, 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 you're right. Indonesian, right? This is the first mm-hmm. ever. So I think either Rofi or my team of buzzers as well and my editor will try to cut as much video as possible so I so I see me smart. By all Just, means, right? man, yeah. this video is like a cow. <laughs> and then you like just, just milk the everything. shit out of it, man. Yeah, so I don't need to shoot the TikTok video like for weeks. <laughs> yeah, man. And it's <laughs> one hour and a half anyways. And there's exactly. plenty of incendiary things that we said on the podcast that you can take and, you know, you can blow up. That'll be to my benefit too. That's the relationship between a Indonesian politician and a Chinese Indonesian businessman. Yeah. Mutually benefit. Mutually This benefit. guy's probably going to be my book here in the next five years. <laughs> 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 but anyways... Thank you for watching The Based Indonesian Show, and I'll see you in the next episode of The Based Indonesian Show. See you guys. Subscribe to The Based Indonesian Show. Jamin halal.